the death toll in Italy from coronavirus has now passed 10,000 people, making Italy the worst affected country in Europe. And it has been the worst affected country in Europe since the beginning of this outbreak. But why? Why is Italy so badly affected? Well, if you read the mainstream media, you'll be given a few possible reasons. One is that the initial infected people in Italy were asymptomatic and therefore able to spread the disease more freely. Another is that Italians live to a ripe old age and therefore are more vulnerable. Well, Italians may live to a ripe old age, and I'm not surprised. They have beautiful surroundings, wonderful food, and fantastic weather. Uh, but I'm not wholly convinced by either of those. What you won't see in the mainstream press, and even the Wikipedia entry on this, is mass immigration from the Wuhan region of China into northern Italy to work in factories there. It's, uh, there's a huge, there are direct flights, there's a huge flow of traffic between northern Italy and that very region of China. Illegal immigrants, perhaps hundreds of thousands of them, all over that region of Italy. Now, when the Prime Minister Giuseppe Conti's government initially placed restrictions on China, or travel from, to and from China, eventually, having initially overcome concerns, of course, about this being racist, they didn't want to restrict travel from China, for the usual ridiculous reasons. But when they eventually did restrict travel, the mayor of Florence decided to hit back at the Italian government and launch a Hug a Chinese Day. He said they wouldn't indulge in psychological terrorism and that they must all come together and in a show of solidarity against hate and racism. To hell with this virus that's killing thousands. Hate is more damaging. This is the kind of response that you get from left-wing hand ringers who know nothing but to shout racist at every single problem. Well, now Italy finds itself with a major problem. And the European Union is doing nothing at all. Oh no, wait, they did hold a video conference. In March, the European Union has been sitting on its hands, proving that this thing is utterly useless. When the going gets tough, the EU does nothing. They held a video conference, as I say, in March, where they decided to allow individual member states to provide the assistance that they needed to provide. How very generous of them. They also offered 7.5 billion euros to national health care uh, work uh, to, to, to help out with national health care systems. But that's it. And here now in the UK, we find ourselves with Boris Johnson himself having been diagnosed positive for coronavirus. Boris, Boris Johnson is now going to write to every household in the country, uh, warning that the worst is yet to come and that even greater restrictions may be placed upon us. It's this is something that none of us have ever lived through before and likely and hopefully will never live through again. But when this passes, and it will pass, we will be find ourselves in a new political place. At least I very much hope we do. The left can try to cover this up all they like and they can try to come up with flimsy, stupid excuses as to why this is happening. But this is happening for a simple reason. Open borders, the left-wing obsession that Europeans or white people can never criticise anything that non-white people do. It's automatically racist. So if we criticise the disgusting, filthy, barbaric practices across China, in, including but not lim limited to these disgusting wet markets, it makes us racist. No, we have got to shut down these markets. We have got to leave animals in the wild where they belong and we have got to stop dirty, filthy practices that are beyond unhygienic and we have to stop the results of those practices coming into our countries. Open borders are also open to disease, malpractice and, and frankly disgusting cultural norms that do not match ours here in Europe. Europe, it's time to close our borders and keep them 
close. Yes, people can travel around the world, but in limited numbers and under strict conditions. We have got to change this free-for-all. And if anything good comes out of it, it will be the growing realisation that our governments all over the world put globalisation first and people second. Let's put that into reverse. Let's save our countries and our continent, save our culture, save our hygiene practices and save our lives.